Well, we've got some great topics on the board this week, Jesse, for the Calling the Clock segment. Yeah, and so I think it's just time for us to not even bullshit around. Let's just go ahead and get started. All right. Topic number one, we got the Texas poker bill, Chad. And this is something crazy off Twitter. I'll let you jump in. Go ahead. Yeah, we have been keeping an eye on the Texas poker market, or live Texas, the state, the Lone Star State, not Texas, Holden, what have you. In Texas, uh, we went on the road trip, uh, was it 2022 in March? I have no memory yeah, of anything. Visited, visited a bunch of these rooms. Well, there's been an effort by Doug Polk and other operators of these card rooms in Texas trying to push through some legislation to make the industry uh, not operate in so much of a gray area, you know, make it a little more legitimate or what have you. But the latest poker bill that they were pursuing to help in that endeavor died. Uh, Doug, tweet, uh, Doug Polk tweeting, uh, sadly, a couple weeks ago, our bill, uh, Poker Bill 2345 officially died. We passed the House, but ran into fierce anti-gaming opposition from powerful people and could not overcome it. This was the furthest a poker bill has ever gotten in the state of Texas. Good sign for the future. Doug did follow it up with another tweet a few hours later saying, to clear, some, to clear up some confusion here, Poker is still legal in the state of Texas, and the lodge will continue to operate. This bill would clarify the language of the law for poker. All we want is a more clear framework for which to operate within. Status quo continues on. Yeah, it's disappointing, but not <clears throat> yeah. surprising. It's a, you know, it's politics. It's bureaucracy. You got to do lobbying. You got to really you know grease the right wheels and whatnot. And I'm from Texas. I'm from Houston originally, and I played poker in the underground rooms out there when I first started back in the early o- early aughts, whatever we call it. Right. And man, it's just been a thing where we're like, let's turn the Astrodome into a casino. Oh, everyone wants this. However, no one will let it happen because there are casinos in Louisiana, casinos in Oklahoma, casino. I mean, they're all around us. And so the people who make decisions just say, you know what? No, you can't have this. Yeah. Such a tough market, man. Such so, so, so tough. The silver lining, like you said, this is the furthest a poker bill has ever gotten in Texas. The yeah. other thing is, is this market is continuing to grow. There's a th- probably thousands of jobs tied up now in these rooms, which is going to be hard for politicians to come and say, no, we're going to put all those people out of work. Okay, well, it's time to move on. Ben Lamb crushing the soul of Johnny World. How great is this? If you didn't, if you didn't miss, if you missed out last time, let's catch this up real quick. Johnny World goes to the table. Thank you, David Williams, for catching this and telling it on Twitter. Um, but Johnny World comes over and says, "Hey, buddy, we have the same starting stack. What a good time to swap one point five percent." And um, Ben Lamb says, "Snap, yes, absolutely." He holds out his hand to accept it, and then Johnny World just starts laughing and says, "Lol, no, nah, I'm good," and just walks away, leaving his hand up. Felt so bad until our boy Ben Lamb takes down the bracelet. Top prize. Chad, how sick is that? Yeah, $492,000. Johnny World finished like in 12th or 13th place for, I don't know, 26K or what have you. So Ben Lamb getting the last laugh here. And I, what I love more is he's leaning into it now. Okay, yes. Not only that, and then that's, we even have it titled right for the show. Ben Lamb has issued a challenge to Twitter. Since Johnny World got me so good, since he burned me, I'm now offering $500 for the best Johnny World needle for the rest of the summer. So, Chad, let's let's try out some things. Oh, God. Okay. You must have one in mind. I don't. Oh, no. I don't know. I have a winner. Do you have anything? I don't really. I was th- actually thinking about it the other night because I'm like, man, I'd like to get a free 500 bucks. No shit. No shit. Absolutely. Yeah, but I just don't Please. know. Like, you got to do something with, I don't know, how, who could you confuse him with? Like, burn him somehow by confusing him with, I don't know. Like it's it's a tough one. I mean, I'm thinking about like delivery services. Let's send him some some bullshit. Who oh, knows? okay. Or like, okay, like, so he would have won. What was it? I think it was like seven thousand. What you want to you want to do like a public embarrassment thing like you did to me in the Mexican restaurant that one time? Okay, with well, Chad's okay. <laughs> we don't have time, to get into that. Yeah. This. <laughs> there was a mariachi band and sombrero, and Chad got mad. <laughs> was it wasn't good. It wasn't good. Um, but yeah, no, I want something. I mean, let's do something to. I mean, it's five hundred dollars. We have to earn it. We have to earn it. Maybe, so. maybe we'll try a few things and we can record it and put it in the show. Because, we, and then we win five hundred bucks and we can do a lot of things with that money. We'll see. Okay, so we talked about Phil Hellmuth and Daniel Grano last week, and uh, you know they've had some some uh, challenges in the first two weeks. Yeah. However, as soon as we freaking said something, Chad, what do they do? They go on a tear. Yeah, it was an interesting hair. Thursday yesterday uh, when, as we're recording this because both of them were going deep in two tournaments. Uh, Helmuth was going deep in the event number 35, the $10,000 secret bounty no limit hold'em, which is just a fancy word of a mystery bounty. I guess the WSOP wanted to put a little spin on it. Uh, whereas Negranu jumped into the 1500 pot limit Omaha massive mm-hmm. field and ended up making a deep run in that. Unfortunately, both just missed out on their first final tables of the summer. I mean, just missed out. 
out. Negreanu finished in 16th for 10,632 in that $1,500 buy in Potlum, right. Omaha. And Helmy finishes in 11th. I mean, come on. How sick is that? 11th for 45,301 plus the bounties. He pulled a 50K bounty and a 5K when he pulled two. I saw in a row on Twitter. I mean, sick runs. But gosh, they're getting so close. Yeah. And it's interesting. Negron, you said in his vlog that he is feeling very confident in his PLO game, which is why he opted to jump into this $1,500 buy-in event as opposed to some other stuff that was running yesterday. And then he finishes 16th in a field of 1,355 runners. Like it's, it's kind of ironic. Negranu's best performances this summer thus far has been in the bigger fields, which just is a little different for him. Yeah, I don't know, man. I um, I think that they can both still take down at least one bracelet this summer, but uh, we're almost near the halfway point. How close were we the halfway point? Uh, like five days away or so we're, we're getting we're closing in on halfway through it, so, it, it's a shame to help me with just missing out on the final table no because kidding. it's an electric atmosphere when he's at a final table and has a shot at that record extending bracelet it just it changes the whole atmosphere i know that the tv production loves it i was walking next to poker hall of famer maury escondani come on yeah we we all were rooting for phil then that one yep no kidding so We've seen the hand. I'm sure you have aces, kings, kings, queens. Thanks to Kevin Martin on Twitter. Let's show the clip. Here at the World Series, we just had kings versus queens versus aces versus kings. Queens flop a set and then aces river a set. What? What is this deck? How many? How many? How many powerful cards are in this deck? What is this hand? Unbelievable! Unbelievable! <laughs> I mean, Jeez, yeah. man on the river. It's got to be like hand of the year nomination uh, for this one. You just, uh, I mean, I may, maybe, maybe. I don't it's, know. Definitely, it's definitely up there. Some of their, the, the quad, flopping quads and uh, the royal flush or the straight flush is my, true. one of my favorites, but this one is still how, cr how soul crushing, how soul crushing. So let's just talk about aces, Kings, Kings, and Queens. The Kings are just stone dead. So, I mean, unless a straight happens miraculously, maybe, but right. queen on the flop. <clears throat> queen on the flop. So now aces are just, well, there's a queen and a jack, yeah. right? Uh, so no, had, there's a, so there's a queen six, four rainbow flop, oh, okay. jack on the turn. That's where it came so in. So at the, on the flop, the worst hand takes the lead, right? Yeah. You all of a sudden you're leaving. The two Kings are drawing dead <laughs> at yeah. this point. So they're very unhappy. And yep. Tai Wei two, he's the guy with aces. So he's in this great spot. He has aces thinking he's going to win this monster. All of a sudden he goes from, you know, from top to now he's way behind and drawing to two outs, man alive. And there you go. Of course, that has to be the river has to be yep. maximize the drama. So, yeah, and I mean, what's great is that hands like this do happen, but they often go unreported or yeah. uncaptured because, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of hands are being dealt at the World Series every year. But at this particular table, even though he wasn't involved in the hand, Kevin Martin, who, of course, is a GG poker ambassador and just a, you know, a, a media beast, social media beast, was there and was able to capture it, which makes it all that much more special. Yeah. I mean, it's a crazy hand. So sad. It's going to happen. Hopefully, uh, you still have some more bracelet events you can play in, and uh, good luck next. You usually one. see it online. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> All right, let's go with we got we got a potential runaway uh, WSP.com Player of the Year here, man. Yeah, speaking of online, and we, it's someone we know. Yeah, this was interesting. So Mike Holtz, aka Brock Lesnar, online on WSOP.com, he won the 2021 WSOP.com Player of the Year. Just crushed it on the site. Kind of took some time off in 2022, and now he's back in 2023. We actually caught up with him. He was at a final table in a live event here at the WSOP, and I was chatting with him, and he basically said to me, he was like, yeah, it looks like I pretty much got the WSOP.com Player of the Year locked up for 2023. So what are you talking about? It's it's <laughs> June already, right? And he said, yeah, I know. Like, and I'm like, what's the situation here? Apparently, he had put in so much volume and had so much success and still plays such high limits. That it, and he's got such a lead right now that it's not impossible, obviously. He said it would have to be catastrophic, though, right. for him to lose. Yeah, if he continues the trajectory he's on, he's just going to run away with it. And I mean, right now, look at the top 10 names. You know, these are we're not going to reveal real names, um, but the Brock Lesnar is up top. I, Chad, you and I did some commentary together back in 2020 during COVID uh, with some of the online bracelets. And I see a lot of these names who I remember, like Pollux, Panoramic, mm -hmm. Art Vandalay, Mr. Larry David, Yol Romero. Like these are some names who are in here who are, are crushers who play those high stakes bracelet events and et cetera, et cetera. So um, I know I can reveal wild. one because it's publicly out there. And Panoramic is Tony Dunst, yeah. WPT commentator, sixth place right now. Yeah. But to put that in perspective, he's got uh, 25,500 points. Uh, Mike Holtz is up at 38,000, 8,000 point lead over second place. And from just based on what he plays in the amount, 
it, it's going to be hard to stop him. And so for him to win, if he does, the WSOP.com Player of the Year twice in three years, uh, that's a heck of an accomplishment. He's a bracelet winner from last year and a three-time circuit ring they call, winner. They're calling the Sean D of this thing. He did, even did a documentary on his like summer. Yes. Check it out. His documentary is sick. Yeah. All right. You go ahead, Chad. John oh, Monette. John Monette. Used to be Angry John. That's yeah, what he that's was right. known as. <laughs> then he settled down. He got married to Diana, a girl I used to work with. Uh, they started a family. I think they have uh, two kids, maybe more. And Angry John became, I don't know, family man John. But that didn't stop him from playing poker. And he recently won his fifth WSOP bracelet in the 1500 triple draw event came with a top prize of $145,000. Uh, it was, I think it made him the 35th player in history to win five or more bracelets, which is a heck of an accomplishment. Yeah. This one was the $1,500 limit deuce to seven triple draw. And for me, I was watching this because Tana, Tana from, Tana run, from good. Yeah, run good. Yeah. He was, he was making a deep run and I love Tana. I love run good. Of course, the sport. So uh, I was paying attention to this to keep track of him. Who else was in that? Wasn't that the one that Kessler yeah, Kessler just missed too? out on the final table. <clears throat> yeah, it was that was a lot of fun watching Kessler in that too. But uh, I mean, what's crazy about uh, angry, not no longer angry John? We'll say like casual John. I don't yeah, know what we're doing. <laughs> but uh, John's five bracelets come in all games that don't have no limit hold them attached to, which is for me crazy. He wins his first one in uh, 2011 in the 2500 eight game mix. 2012 the seven card stud. 17 it's another deuce to seven low ball draw. Then 2021, he wins a limit hold him close, but there's no in in the front. The best game. The the what, what do you call it? The Cadillac of poker? Yeah. The Cadillac of poker. <laughs> Real quick, Angry John story. Last year's WSOP, we're in the parking garage. They have the gate. A car just couldn't figure out the money situation. I was stuck behind him and there was a car behind me. Turned out it was Angry John behind me. And this guy was stuck. Uh, he was at the gate. He was, you know, drunk and belligerent. And Angry John gets out of his car and he starts walking towards the guy. And I thought, oh my gosh, Angry John's going to come beat some Let's ass go. or something. Let's go. Right. And then John actually was just trying to be a nice guy. He was bringing his diamond card up or seven stars to try to pay for the guy's parking. The guy got angry at John and John just turned and walked back. Okay. Well, that's fun. Let's go with the 50K PPC starts on Sunday, guys. Chad, of course, you and I both love poker. I love the history. This is one of my favorite events of all summer, besides the main event, to watch. How about you? I mean, yeah, you it's, a- it's such a, a historic event. Started in 2006 when it was won by the late, great Chip Reese. Yep. And they've named the trophy after him. This was, it started off as a horse tournament. And now it's uh, played in the eight game format. But it was to really crown, look, you have the main event. You have the No Limit Championship. We need some sort of equivalent for the mixed game players. Yeah. And this was it, and it still is. It's such a prestigious tournament. Uh, if you look back at some of the winners, some of the biggest names in the game have won this thing. You had, as I mentioned, Chip Reese, Scotty Wynn, Brian Rast. Michael Mizraki wins it twice. Three. Three, that's three right, times. That's right, that's right, three, of course. God, Which is, is just crazy. And now yeah. you have Dan Cates, Jungle Man, has won it the Man. last two years and says he's going to come in and win it three in a row. And I mean, <laughs> what's crazy is, I mean, I think we have to believe him. It's not like he's taking any time off in between and he crushed it two years in a row. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty sick. So uh, Daniel Cates came in, you know, he beat what? Ryan Lang mm-hmm. two years ago. That was the hand where, oh, that was a crazy Ryan Lang hand. And last year it was uh, Yuri. Yep. Um, man, I can't wait to see who he beats this time because I think Jungle Man's going to take it down again. I can't wait to see what he dresses up as this year. Well, I can wait for that. That's uh, his. <laughs> I mean, if there's anyone who does costumes worse than Phil Helmuth, it's going to be Jungle Man, in my opinion. So I, uh, I'm not looking forward to his, his outfit. You know, we talked about uh, Johnny World, John Hennigan. Yeah. He actually won that event too back in 2014. And then I thought it was very interesting three years uh, four years later, rather in 2018, nearly won it again. He finished runner up to Michael Mizrahi. Uh, so he was almost a two time. And of course, Johnny world, one of the best mixed game players in the world. Uh, if you had to pick somebody real quick, this to win it this year, who do you like? Jungle man, obviously. Yeah, Jungle man. I'm going to go. I want Todd Brunson to make a deep oh, run please, and win it for please. in honor of his father. Absolutely. All right. Let's wrap it up with Sean D. Let's save the best for last. Sean D wins bracelet number six. And I'm just so happy, man. I'm so happy. Yeah, it was uh, it was the fifteen hundred dollar eight game mix. This was the tournament I got to play in, mm-hmm. and it's crazy. You know, Deeb goes on to win this thing for almost two hundred k in his sixth bracelet, which really puts him in airified air in terms of poker history at the World Series of Poker. Yeah, of course, he's a very accomplished player outside the WSOP, even online, where he's been a crusher. I mean, Sean Deeb is one of the best players, poker players of all time. I honestly believe that, and he's doing this 
this summer, while he's in this, the midst of this weight, uh, weight body percent. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, back with uh, Bill Perkins. Yeah. And so to come in here and try to balance that and play top notch poker, I know there are a lot of people who were concerned. Would he be able to do that? And here he is proving that, yes, maybe he's not getting in the gym every day like he wanted to, but he's still crushing at poker and he's eating right. He's looking good. Uh, it seems like it's coming up all Sean Deeb right now. I went back through our Poker News photo album and I, the earliest picture I could find of Sean Deeb was from 2008, Aussie Million stuff. And it was so cool just like see the, the, the uh, you know, how he's evolved, not only like in his, in his wins and stuff, but just seeing... He's been, he's just, it's just been so much fun following the life of Sean Deeb. And to go over his six bracelets real quick, 2015, he wins the P, the Parliament Hold'em Championship. Uh, let's see, 2016, he wins a seven card stud. 2018, he wins a PLO eight handed high roller. 2018, again, he wins a second bracelet the same year, the 10K Big Blind Annie's No Limit Hold'em. Then in 2021, he wins the PLO again, the high roller. And then he wins, of course, this year. Plus, he won a circuit ring this year in the right. Turnstone main event. Yeah. I mean, what That's, a freaking crusher. He just, he's just been doing a great job for years and years, it's man. It's crazy to think he's won all of his bracelets since 2015. Yeah. I mean, has there been a better player in the last decade than Sean Deeb? I, I'd no. be hard pressed to find one. No, for real. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. Thanks to you guys for, uh, for following our call on the clock and for uh, all this stuff. Chad, it's been good. Yeah. Let's bring in our guest. Go ahead. Jason Kuhn. Boom. <laughs> 